What's up guys, Patrick Wallen here from PatrickWallenyRealty.com and I am here today with my preferred lender, Tim O'Leary. Say hello, Tim. What's up guys, how are you? Right on, Tim, my man. We're gonna talk today about VA loans and how you can build your real estate empire and really what you're looking at in regards to cost when it comes to purchasing your first home. All right, well, let's get rocking and rolling. Let's jump over and take a look at the numbers. So stick around, let's check it out. Um, once again, we are doing a 2020 goal of really sharing with all our followers how they can build wealth in 2020 with real estate. So this video is specifically for veterans. So this is going to be talking about VA loans and we're going to discuss, you know, how much does it cost? Where should you start? What kind of house should you, you should buy? So let's jump into it. The first thing you're going to want to buy as a first time home buyer using a VA loan is most likely, you know, a two bedroom, two bath or two bedroom, one bath condo, because that's going to allow you to get into the market, not spend a million dollars and have the option to rent it out later. So let's, let's dive into it. So Tim, I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to you. We're going to break down these numbers. Um, you know, like I was uh, t telling you in, in, in other videos, a two, two condo, I mean, depending where you are, but you can definitely find one for anywhere between 300 and 450, uh, VA approved. So we're going to use that as our staple and our benchmark. So let's look at the numbers, Tim. Why don't you tell us what we're looking at here in regards to cost when it comes to purchasing a home with a VA loan? You got it. So what I did, uh, you know, in preparation for this is I, I looked at a typical young military person who's relocating to Hawaii and they, you know, they have the option of living on base or getting their BAH applied to, to a landlord or they can start building their wealth now. And so what I did is in the rent, you're going to pay somewhere around $2,000, maybe a little bit of less, little, maybe a little bit more uh, if you live on or off base. And if you look at the first property in the second column, that's a $300,000 purchase price and with zero down. And but there are closing costs and prepaids of about $3,000. You have a monthly payment that is less than you're going to be paying in rent. Okay, so that's about eighteen eighty-five per month, and that includes the loan payment, property taxes, and the HOA association fees. All right. So the idea and what the requirement is for a VA loan, and it being that you have to be an owner occupant, is that you occupy it for one year. Okay. After one year, you are eligible to rent out that property. Now we can't promise what rents are going to be. You know, a year from now, they're pretty stable. But I think it's reasonable to think that you can probably rent a property for that's worth three hundred thousand, close to that monthly payment. Would you say, Patrick? Absolutely, and and I can't. You know, this always blows my mind when we talk about this stuff, um, because like you said, rent out here is crazy expensive, right? So in this, this really gives us a bird's eye view that really it's almost cheaper. It is cheaper based on these numbers to actually purchase a home than it would be to rent because you would basically be paying more to rent a place and not be investing in yourself and building wealth than it would be to just purchase yourself a home that you can really invest in yourself and make money every single year, right? That's right. You know, again, we can't predict the future, but Hawaii is a pretty stable market. So let's move the tape forward. And let's say that we, after one year, we decide, you know what? Okay, I think I'm ready. You know, your E6 is now an E7. You got a, a little bump in pay on all levels, BAH, et cetera. So now you wanna go look at buying another property. So in this case, we showed a property of 450,000. And again, VA loan, zero down. Now there is a extra cost, but it's not all that big. They charge 3.6 on the VA funding fee. If you put zero down, it's called a subsequent use. But again, that's rolled into the loan. So as far as the monthly goes, that's all that really matters. So it's not out of pocket, it's just rolled into your mortgage. So for that property, 450, a little bit higher on the association dues, but a nicer property, you're looking at a payment of just under $2,800. And again, you can live in that property. Uh, you can stay in that property for all we care. You, after one year, the requirement is you can rent it out again. So that puts you up to two properties, VA finance with zero down, in this case, I think we're at four thousand, a little under four thousand dollars for the all the cash into the in for the closing cost. So now you've leveraged, let's call it seven thousand dollars out of pocket, and you now have leveraged. You now own property worth seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. 
That's like 1%, less than 1% of a down payment or funds towards the purchase to leverage almost three quarters of a million dollar property in real estate. That's pretty amazing. Real estate gains and wealth is built over time. And we know that rents go up faster than, than values do. So what you want to do is be able to control the asset, control the payment. And as the uh, equity starts to build, your payment is still remains here and values keep increasing. Yeah. So uh, one of the, my favorite concepts when people are asking me about like, how am I making money in real estate when I feel like I'm always spending money with my mortgage payment, right? Um, right. One of the best metaphors I like to use is, so with a loan and buying a house, let's say this, this one right here for $300,000. If you want to take the same concept and add it to the stock market and say, you know, just like real estate out here, our average appreciation, because we're in a very strong market out here is anywhere between 4% and 6% every single year. So if you were to take that same concept, add it to the stock market, you would technically have to have $300,000 cash and put it in this mystical stock market and really hope that you're going to get 4%, but you actually have to have $300,000 cash, right? Do you want to put that in your E-Trade account or what have you? With this concept, you're literally leveraging $3,000 and making 4% every single year on your property in appreciation. Is that, am I understanding this correct? Pretty much the same concept, Patrick. Yeah, not everyone has that kind of money sitting around and put in the stock market. And you know what? Let's face it. Uh, the stock market has had some really nice runs, but you know what? Some things, you know, it doesn't always last. Real estate is a tangible asset, something that you get to use, right? Something that you can leverage, something that creates equity and value, something that you can enjoy. So that's where I, I feel like over time, you will, you will win in the marketplace over time. Absolutely. And that's the other thing, right? Is, is uh, purchasing a home is taking care of a lot of those, you know, that pyramid of what we need as a human being, right? You need your food, you need your shelter, you need your security. Well, you get basically your security and your, and your shelter right there. And you're actually using that money that you're investing to take care of those two opposed to the stock market. You're really just kind of throwing it in there. So um, that's pretty amazing. So Another thing I kind of wanted to go over was, you know, the the closing costs and stuff like that. So why don't we break this down a bit more? Sure. Um, let's see here, closing costs here. Patrick, so my offer to all the people that choose to work with us is that I can do a full on analysis, much like this one where it shows, you know, the different breakdowns. So what we want is to make sure that our buyers are educated before they start buying property. And this is part of one of the tools we use to, to help them understand. Yeah, and this is actually one of the main reasons why I first started working with you, Tim, is because you're very tech savvy in the sense of um, being able to use these tools to really show people what their monthly payment is gonna be. Because at the end of the day, that's all they really care about. And you are great at setting different scenarios so people can once again get a bird's eye view going, okay, if I want this house at this price, this is what it's gonna look like on a monthly payment and cash to close. So I've absolutely loved this tool and and you've been um, so great with working with my buyers and breaking it down. So I thank you for that. Um, you know, it, it's the largest investment people are gonna make in their lives. We need to honor that and really focus in on it. I mean, cause really there's no bigger purchase you're gonna make in your lifetime but a home. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so what we got here is um, the fee details. So. <clears throat> this is cash to close on a three hundred thousand dollars. So we're saying, so let me let me just make sure I get this straight. You're saying for a three hundred thousand dollar home, for a VA loan, with closing costs, someone basically only has to have three thousand dollars. That's right. So it's incredible that you can control three hundred thousand dollars with as little as three grand. Yeah, some of the fees uh, that are not reflected in here are a result of prime lending. Um, we take care of all the unallowable fees that amounts to over $1,300. So that is something that our company feels strongly about. We want to take care of our veterans. And uh, being a national company, we take care of that in every marketplace. So we're in all 50 states. That's awesome. And that's, that's something you guys should really pay attention to because, you know, anywhere you can save money, you got to save money, especially for, for you veterans out there. You want to make sure that you're looking at 
different programs because not all lenders are built equal, right? Some lenders will cover costs, some won't, some will cover some. And that was one of the great things I love working with you, Tim, is because you, you do cover those unallowables and it allows those veterans to have a little bit more money in their pocket and not have to come out with more closing costs. So I thank you for that. All right, guys, one other thing I wanted to show you guys is really showing you a chart on how much of a waste of money rent really is when you can't afford to purchase a home. So Tim, why don't you explain what we're looking at here in this rent versus principal paid over 15 years? Sure thing. And this has been adjusted on an annual basis. So with rents, approximately 3% per year increases. Uh, and so after after 15 years, imagine living in the place, renting for 15 years, and you know what, people do it. Um, that's almost $450,000 you've paid in to your landlord. Someone's getting rich and it's not you if you're renting. So you get goose egg after 15 years. Wow. Uh, if you go to the next column, see the green, that represents money. So what that is, is your equity position. And what that means is after 15 years, you've paid, the value has gone up on an average of 4% per year, and you've paid down the mortgage. Once you click on the more info button, let's show them what, what their net equity is. So look at the very bottom, the green. So $300,000, your total equity after 15 years, believe it or not, that $300,000 property is now worth 540,000. So the difference between the new value estimated and the existing loan balance, that difference is your net equity. So that's what you as a new, as a homeowner, that's your equity. So look at that. Wow, wow. So wait, so you're saying here that if they purchase this home at 300,000, 15 years from now, of course we can't dictate the market, but based on 30 years of data, we can say on a 4% appreciation, which is on the low end, we're looking at a real estate value of 540, meaning after the loan, they would have a total equity of $347,000 in that house. We can't predict the future. Uh, what we're doing is like you said, is about 4% over a year, which is a conservative number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that 347 is basically the combination of the, the forced investment, the, the principal uh, payment, right? and also that 4% of appreciation of the home. Is that correct? That's correct. The difference is equity. Got you, got you. So yeah, that's amazing. I mean, and, and look at this one. We're looking at five, almost half a million dollars after 15 years of potential yeah. equity that you can have. And guys, we're not gonna talk it about now, but once you have equity like this, you're basically creating a bank that you can leverage later um, in the near future, right, Tim? That's right. I mean, there's opportunities to refinance to take out equity. Uh, investment properties are different from owner-occupant properties, but uh, the restrictions as far as how much cash you can pull out. But the bottom line is you've earned that equity and you can keep putting it to work and you can buy more property. It's absolutely insane. Um, well, right on, Tim. I really appreciate you breaking down these numbers because it can seem kind of mystical to people, but with your expertise and having tools like this, it really helps uh, break it down in a simple manner. So I appreciate that. Um, if you guys have any other questions in regards to building wealth or VA loans or real estate, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we would love to help you in any way. Other than that, that's pretty much it guys. Um, Tim, thank you so much once again for everything. And I look forward to our next video. Awesome, a pleasure. Aloha. Aloha, I'll talk to you soon, Tim. Hey.